Hey, what's going on, everybody? Robert Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Got another video for you today. Uh, today's subject: some more digital painting. And what I've got here is a wolf head, uh, werewolf head that I've been working on. Uh, I had to kind of study these up a little bit. These are tricky to draw, at least for me, anyways. So um, I've got some digital painting going on here. I'm going to take it down to the basic without the color. So there's my my grayscale rendition. Um, roughly got about, I don't know, hour, maybe two hours, yeah, I guess closer to two hours into just this part, but there was a lot of figuring out that I was doing to get the textures and everything that I wanted, um, you know, and I'm still working, I still see a lot of smudge lines and that kind of thing, um, and I, I'll, I'll cover a little bit, I'm using, uh, again, Photoshop CS6 here, I've got some layers here, um, I want to show you the difference from, you know, the tonal value that I got here. I've got a smudge brush with the, which is just a chalk brush uh, with basic settings. You can look at some of my other digital painting uh, tutorials and it'll tell you the settings if you're interested. Um, it's going to be the digital painting 101 series. So, uh, but at any rate, I just I bounce back and forth from the smudge brush to, you know, I'll convert back to black and white here. Uh, when I'm doing something like this, I use a lot of the chalk brush right there, uh, which I also use for the smudging. And at the very end, I use this one, which I call it a hairbrush, but it's just these little stipples. And you can get some really neat uh, hair effects. Actually, Control Z, Control or Command Alt Z, and you can go back multiple times, uh, just like using Control Z in most applications. I turn the opacity way down. So that's what I want to say to you that. I drop that way down and probably even lower, ah, about there, 30, 24 is good. And then by the overlapping strokes, you get a very nice uh, kind of fur or hair texture. You know, and I kind of bounce back and forth. I use a little bit of the dark like this. Hit X, it'll bring, bring it to the light. And I go back and forth and I build that texture up. And you want the light transparency effect to do that because it's, it's more or less the overlay of the lines that you have to look at. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't want to just sit there and look at it like you're trying to build hair like that. It's actually the part where it overlaps and that texture that it's giving you, that's where the, the hair look starts to come in. So again, Command-Alt-Z. Go back a few times or just go to your history, however you like to do it. Okay, so the purpose of this video... Um, isn't so much to teach you how to draw werewolves or how to, um, you know, do the painting techniques. Uh, this one is going to be based mainly on color, but I want to show how that works. Like I, I saved two separate versions of this. Uh, let me move the one off to the side here so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got one which is more uh, a lighter uh, opacity. And let me grab all these together. Move them over. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so the purpose of this is to show you how, you know, I like to do an effect where I draw everything in grayscale, digitally painted grayscale, and then at the very end I add overlay uh, modes, uh, mainly in color mode up here as far as the, uh, the type, and that's how I apply my color. So, you know, if I take my first one, just a basic brown uh, color that I picked, um, you go to that, it's on color mode 100%, that's what I get. As I add another layer uh, in color mode, where is it? I'm not seeing that one. Let me add the next one. Color mode, um, I added a little bit of like a brighter orange to, you know, show some depth, some curvature of the, the uh, wolf's head there. You know, if you have just one flat tone, it looks really basic. And then I tried to add a little bit of blue, which a lot of times you'll use like a, a soft blue like this for uh, nighttime lighting. So, and I just kind of keep, you know, and you can see I dropped the opacity down on, which one? The orange. So it was too bright at first. And yeah, see how it's way too bright right there? So the other thing you can do is control your opacity. And you just kind of mix them together until you get your desired effect. Now I'm not really liking the blue that much, so let me pull that off. I just wanted to show you uh, how you would add another additional light to this side. Um, you know, something simple. We'll say the eyes. Now, one of the things I I try to do, or at least 
I think, uh, when I'm doing this uh, kind of werewolf bit, is I try to make the eyes look human because, you know, it's supposed to be a combination of a wolf and a man, so, or a woman. So, let's pick like a green, um, got it on color mode, paint that in. And so what it's doing is it's grabbing the, the tone of gray and it's, it's mixing the color with it. And that's what you're, you're getting for your, your uh, darkness of the tone. So the purpose of me showing you the difference over here, if I was to take even this uh, brown color right here, I'll copy that layer by holding Alt using the pointer. You'll see it add that second arrow. It'll make immediately make a copy of it. I'll move that over to the other werewolf head there, try to line it up. Saves me from recoloring it. And see the difference in tone, even if I pull these other colors off? The difference in tone is uh, very dramatic. You know, this one looks more pastel and, and light and, you know, and I, I've heard of a lot of people having that problem. I even noticed that in some of the comments, you know, so that's where I wanted to address this. Simply by darkening the tones, so if I grab this wolf head over here, I go to control L, which allows me to control the levels and the darkness. Uh, you can watch interactively how it's going to deepen that. And I can adjust just the dark tones, just the highlights, the transition between the two, uh, whether or not it's a you know, hard edge transition or a softer you know, transition. I'm getting all that by adjusting the values or the levels of the, the uh, black there. And then the other one, obviously, is uh, brightness contrast. That's another way to do it. Let's see. Turn the bright contrast up. All right, like that. I'm, I'm not liking that. It still looks uh, <clears throat> like almost like it dulled it. And my personal favorite, duplicate the layer. And see how much darker that made it. And now I can just control the opacity of each layer, get it to the de you know desired effect, Control E to merge down, you know, and it's a quick way to, to get it there. I'm going to go ahead and put this back, though, so I want you to see the difference, you know, and you might be going for a more animated look where this is more suitable. So, essentially, that's the way it works, you know, control your grayscales, paint in your detail, and then overlay your color modes, and then at the very end, you can save a, you know, um, a final version down. Uh, but the, the, way, the reason I like working this way is because you've got a lot of flexibility into getting to your end result and adjusting things. I mean, sure, you end up with a lot of layers, and you got to watch a lot of layers because it, it taxes the uh, the RAM on your system. But at the same time, you know, you you got a lot of uh, options there, and options, you know, can uh, well can be a good or a bad thing, but oftentimes a good thing when you're doing this type of stuff. So color mode, pick your your color, your tone for a little bit more red you know paint that in there uh, and you know play with the other uh, options too it doesn't always have to be color mode uh, especially something like this where I'm seeing the oh my my opacity is down too that's why it's painting so dull but actually it looked more more appropriate because you know the the tone inside the mouth is going to be pretty dark if you're going for realism, if you're going for animated, then yeah, you use like a bright red in there, but uh, for a more realistic look, it's going to be reddish black. So that's actually closer to realistic. But the other thing I wanted to show you is that, you know, you can bounce back and forth from color to overlay. Got real dark right there. Screen, lightened up a little bit. Multiply. So those are the ones I mainly use, and it's primarily color. And then at the very end, of the digital painting, uh, I'll even do a normal mode and I'll kind of sample colors and paint them back in. I usually pick, uh, let's see, hard brush, where's it at? Sketch marker. I've got it set kind of like a marker brush. And then I'll just sample, we add one more layer. See, I'm a layer junkie here. And I'll sample colors and just paint. If there's an area that just doesn't look as, you know, as vivid as I want it to, I'll sample colors and I'll paint back in, maybe eliminate some, you know, highlights that I don't want to see in there. Uh, just a good way to get the the final touches onto your, your piece. And you can just hold Alt 
sample anywhere in the painting. You can interactively move it if you're using a newer version like CS6 here. And you can get the color you want and softly paint over top and maybe correct some things. What color? I'm not looking at a picture. What color is a wolf's nose? I think it's a darker brown. See, and since I've got it on a, um, a hard brush with, uh, I'll show you the settings just to be sure, but it leaves transfer on. It's just giving me kind of this, excuse me, kind of this uh, transparency as I'm painting over it. So it's good for painting over like the black lines, you know, um, if you don't want those to end up in your final, uh, you know, painting or whatever. Yeah, it needs to be darker for sure. Bring the opacity up a little more. I can go all the way to black. But at any rate, this isn't me trying to show you how to digitally paint so much as it is trying to show you the techniques for um, for how to color. You know, one, one way to color. Another way is just to, you know, pick your colors and paint them in like I'm doing here from the very, you know, start. I'm starting to do a little bit more of that, but there's still reasons why I really like working in the grayscale mode uh, and then coloring right at the very end. And the coloring right at the very end becomes extremely quick. So at any rate, there you go. If you got any questions, drop them below. Let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Check out Blackstone at IndiePlanet.com. That's my comic book. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, new videos each week, and uh, keep drawing. Keep having fun. Talk to you soon. Bye.